Hello and welcome to RegoFix Tech Chat. My name is David McHenry. I am the engineering and technical manager here at RegoFix USA. Today, let's talk about a question we get all the time. Proper pull stud installation. Exactly how do I put this in? What torque do I put it to? And why have those values changed over the years? We've moved over to our workbench to go through the proper installation of our pull studs. Now, as you might be aware, there are several different pull stud profiles available. Everything from an ANSI stud like this to Moss style or even DIN style studs. What's really important is to make sure you have the proper wrench or socket that will fit each of the different profiles. Now, in this case, I'm going to use a socket and we're going to go over the top of it to lock on nice and tight to make it easy to put on. We're going to use a torque wrench in our torque block here in just a moment. But what I want to point out is what's changed over the years. Now, if I grab an older style pull stud and I hold these two up, you can see there's actually a difference in length. Now, this pull stud is made to move the engagement area up deeper into the tool holder. So it's going to be farther into the thicker part of the material, which is going to cause less deformation when I tighten this. Now, this is a really good high quality stud and the longer threads or longer reach do actually make a difference. But that doesn't mean that the short stud is a problem. It will still work totally effectively as long as you stay within the proper torque. But what is that torque value? Now, if you have the RegoFix catalog, you can go to page 293, you'll find a link down below, and it'll show you the torque specs for your 30 tapers up through 50 tapers really easy to follow. If you have a Torco block, you will actually find the values on the back of your ER32 ring. Makes it nice and easy for your setup. You don't have to worry about the catalog or different torque wrenches. So what is that torque value? In the past, you would actually see something like a 40 taper pull stud tightened as high as 80 foot pounds. Now, in today's world, that's way too high at 80 foot-pounds were actually deforming the bottom of the taper. But why was that acceptable 20 years ago, 15 years ago? Well, it all comes down to machine design. As the machines have become more and more accurate and faster and faster RPMs have been used in the spindles, we're seeing we're holding on to more of the taper. So now, instead of having a bigger area of the tool holder, hanging out in the bottom of the spindle, not making contact, those spindles are holding more of the taper with very little of that taper hanging out without contact. In the past, when we didn't hold on to the entire taper, it didn't really matter if we deformed it. Now that we're holding on to it, we have those tight tor torque specs that we have to make sure we stick to. Well, here we are at our Torco block and we have our pull stud we're going to assemble. And in this case, we're going to use our Torco block ring, the ER32. And if I turn it over, you can see my specs for my different tapers. I also have the option to use the Torco block ring that has uh, either foot pounds or Newton meters. And if I'm using this, I just reference the catalog, the 50 Newton meters or 36 foot pounds to, to do this. Or if you already have your own fixture, all you have to do is set your torque wrench to one of those specs and you're off and running. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the, uh, the blue ring in, make it nice and easy. I'm gonna set my needle to 40 foot-pounds. I already have my Cat 40 tool holder, in this case, in my Torco block. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my pull stud. Now, I'm not actually going to put the, the thread locker on, but I would actually apply a thread locker to the threads, I would thread that in to my tool holder and get that seated as best possible. Now I'm going to take the appropriate sized socket and wrench and just engage it properly here and torque it down. Now that didn't look like much, but that was actually the 50 Newton meters or 36 foot pounds. That's all you need for a 40 taper. Any more than that, and I can measure the deformation in that taper. As you've seen, 
installing the pulse that is very, very important. Down below, we have a link to a previous tech chat that goes through what happens if you don't follow the proper guidelines with TIR and possible fretting issues. And if you're here in the North American market, don't forget that Regofix USA can install your pull studs for you as part of our tech services. If you have any questions about this video, our tech services, or need guidance with your pull studs, please reach out to your Regofix technical team.